we're going to treat your system like, oh, the contest. Fuck. Oh, well, here's the thing. I'm going to play two notes for you. If you get the song right, we're going to send you the shirt. Did I already say that? Hi, this is Kevin Deal from Upscale Audio, and today we're going to talk about the KLH Model 3. Oh man, I'm telling you, we were over in the store, we were listening to these speakers, and I'm just having so much fun, and I just start thinking about the old days of KLH. I'm telling you, you know what, I mean, I'm not that old where I was back in the day of Edgar uh, Vilcher, but still, I sold KLH back in the 70s, right? And I have to think about that stuff and how much fun I had. And I was listening to this music. I got to say something here. Now, now, people are going to go, oh, here goes Kevin talking about drugs again, but I want to ask everybody a question and I want you to be serious. You know, I was listening to music and I go, oh my God, he, Lay Lady Lay, Bob Dylan, I know... I, can pr I know every time they're going to hit the cowbell. Or if I'm listening to David Bowie or the Rolling Stones' uh, Sympathy for the Devil, I mean, I know every note before it's going to happen. And I don't know. I, I kind of give credit to that. I give credit to the fact that I did LSD and mushrooms back when I was a very young man. And I just think, you know what, it gave me this deeper appreciation for music and the ability to have this memory for it. This memory for stuff that maybe I don't even know it that well, but I know every beat to it. And then I thought, you know what, I don't know about that. Cause you know, I was kind of like that when I was 10 years old. That's when I fell in love with all of this stuff when I was 10. So maybe, and I certainly wasn't doing acid at 10, right? I think I waited until I was at least probably like 12. Anyway, put it in the comment section. You know what I'm going to do? I want to know if you have a memory for music. So I'm going to put a contest at the end of this thing. I want to find out. I am going to play two notes off of something. Two notes. And I want you to see if you can guess it. And if you do, I will send you your choice of an upscale audio shirt or a primo, any of the shirts that we make. How's that sound? Okay. But if you're in the UK, you guys kind of spoil it sometimes because you're up at night when we launch these videos. You're just waking up in the morning. So this is only for people in the United States where I can send shirts to. I, I, don't, I can't really send them overseas. All right. Okay. Let's get off of that. Let's get off of drugs. Let's talk about KLH. Oh, my God. I used to sell. The, we sold the Model 17s. We sold the 355, uh, the Barons. I guess I would call them the Big Baron now. But back then, we didn't call them that. We just called them Baron. That speaker was actually not an acoustic suspension. It was a ported speaker. But by that point, you know, all the original people uh, from KLH were kind of, It was a different time back then. So what is KLH about? You know, uh, Edgar Vilcher, this is a, what's called an acoustic suspension or what was called air suspension. For many, many years, a lot of people were referring to these speakers as air suspension. And uh, that was something that was invented by Edgar Vilcher. And it's such a funny thing because this guy was teaching a class on high fidelity. Uh, back in the 50s, and this guy named Henry Close came to his class. It was like a night school class on high-fidelity music reproduction. And that's how those two met. And Edgar Vilcher had this great idea of not having an open baffle speaker or not having a ported speaker, whatever. He had an idea for using the cabinet uh, to... Uh, create back pressure for the bass driver, make bass more accurate. And in fact, here's a fun fact for you. What he did back then is he took a speaker, he had an electro, uh, uh, a Western Electric, I think it was, driver, and he cut out the surround and he took a mattress cover, a mattress cover, and he took that and cut it to create a new surround and put it into his experimental cabinet and he thought he was onto something. He brought in Henry Close. Henry Close said, hallelujah, brother, we are onto something. They started uh, acoustic research and then a year later, that was, and got a patent in 1956 and 1957. Henry Close said, hey, I can do this. So he went and started KLH. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. I love companies with history and what you know they talk about what's old is new and and that's certainly what we're talking about here 
So you've all heard about the KLH Model 5, and the Model 5, I got to say, is probably one of the biggest selling speakers that we have here at Upscale Audio, period. End of story. Now, what is this speaker about? Well, it's a smaller cabinet. It's on a shorter stand. It's, or I'm sorry, a taller stand because you got to get the tweeter up. Because it's a smaller cabinet, you got to get the tweeter up a little higher. Plus, it's got a greater pitch to it to get the tweeter radiating up to proper ear level for listening. It is less expensive than a Model 5. And we got to say to ourselves, well, what is that really going to mean? I'm going to talk about that before I talk about all the specs. The, the, the Model 5 is a bigger cabinet, and it's a three-way. This is a smaller cabinet. It's a two-way. When you have a smaller cabinet, you're not going to have as much bass. However, there are very, very charming things about a two-way speaker. I freaking love two-way speakers because then you don't have that mid-range driver that can sometimes get squawky. And you hear me bitch about that sometimes. Some speakers that I've heard over the years ad infinitum have had this problem with this thing, right? The mid-range that just doesn't have that you know, the body that you get from Johnny Cash. And I'm telling you something, a two-way speaker can be very, very beguiling in that way. And I'd have to say, if we, you know, before I even get into the parts, that is what will set the speaker apart from the Model 5. So the mid-range is really, really beautiful in this loudspeaker, but we have to deal with reality and we have to deal with physics and we have to deal with money and we have to realize that no, this is not going to have the bottom end that a KLH Model 5 will have. So what do you do then? Well, you could get this speaker, uh, because if you take a speaker like this and the cabinet's just a little bit smaller, the smaller the cabinet, the greater the ability of the speaker to disappear, right? That's why people like some of these really crazy little bookshelf speakers. So this is a little bit smaller, and if you really take your time position, because we spent time on it, right? We spent some time using our special setup disc that we use here at Upscale Audio to set these up. And if you get it right, I mean this speaker, it's a holographic, three-dimensional image. And that's what I love. I don't want to hear a speaker there. I don't want to hear a speaker there. I want to hear a body. I want to hear a person, male or female, singing right in the middle, and I want to hear instruments, and I want no sense of a speaker cabinet there. And so this speaker can do that. But if you're in a bigger room, it may not pressurize it real well for bass. So you got to figure out who you are as a uh, customer, you know, when you uh, get down to it. You know, um, if you like to crank it up, if you like a good kick-ass bass response, I mean, this may not be the way to go for you. Let's be real about it. Now, you could get a subwoofer, and I gotta say something. You could, by spending, a, you know, a $1,000 uh, on a sub uh, from RHEL, let's say, as an example, you could end up maybe with a superior system because having a subwoofer allows you to make up for the sins of the room. It can, you know, even in my home, I've got a pair of these big Focal Grand Utopias, $260,000 speakers. After I get done with the, everything and get to work on my own house, I will probably still have stacked REL subwoofers because it allows me to get everything just the way I want it. So another way to set up a system like this is get a pair of these, get yourself a sub, and then dial it in just the way you want it and still have a speaker because it's a little smaller, it will disappear. They're 88 dB efficient, um, and they have an impedance they claim at six ohms. Uh, they drop down to about a minimum of 3.6. I'm gonna say this, if you're a Prima Luna owner, these work very, very well with Prima Luna. So any of the Prima Luna amps, the Evo 100, 200, 300, 400, it's like peanut butter and jelly. 36 watts from a tube amp, it's going to rock your world. If you do like to really turn it up and you're the former lead guitarist from Ted Nugent or whatever the hell, I mean, maybe you're going to want to get a bigger uh, solid state amp. But then maybe you're going to want to get a speaker that has higher sensitivity too, right? 
uh, a speaker that is more efficient and doesn't require as much power. 88 dB efficient is pretty average for a speaker of this size. You know, it's not really a difficult drive. Oh my God, this is the uh, mahogany. It's West African mahogany. It is a real wood veneer, absolutely amazing. And then it comes with this cream colored grill. You can get them in walnut, but the walnuts come with a lighter, I think they call it a washed linen grill, or you can purchase black grills. You can actually purchase any of the grills. So no matter what speaker you buy, you can buy whatever grill you want. And they're not even that expensive, like $200 for a pair of them. And the grill is magnetic. You know, this is a nice base driver. It's a paper uh, pulp uh, uh, cone. I mean, the suspension is a, it feels like it's a butyl rubber edge surround and I like that because they have a tendency to not fall apart. They have a tendency to not degrade from just California smog. Uh, it's got a big magnet structure. It's like a five pound magnet. This is an inch and a half aluminum dome tweeter. It's absolutely bitching. Now the tweeter has an adjustment on the back. I'm going to show you. Now what you need to know is that the high setting is actually the flat setting, okay? So high is standard, high is flat. And so if you bring it down here to what's called mid, you're gonna be dropping it about 1.5 dB. And if you drop it down here, about another 1.5 dB. So, you know, if you have a little bit of a, if you have a bouncy room, you know, you clap your hands and it's really reflective. And if the top end is getting on your nerves, you're gonna be able to fine tune it to your own personal taste. Look at this though. I mean, it comes with these stands. I mean, for the price of like under two, I shouldn't say the price because they'll end up raising it, but they're under $2,000 a pair, you know, with the stands. I mean, no wonder we sell so many of these things. God dang it. Look, I don't care how much money you spend. It's kind of funny because I was uh, listening to a, an interview with Edgar Vilcher and this guy believes, the guy that, invented the acoustic suspension loudspeaker, the patent holder. And you know what he said? He said electronics had gotten to a point, uh, like turntables, because they are made a turntable. And he said it was really kind of simple in some ways to do those things. He said the most important thing though, the place where we had the greatest opportunity for improvements was loudspeaker design. And I just had a guy that contacted our store and the son of a, God, I don't know where he shopped at. But he had like $10,000 in electronics and he had $3,000 in speakers. And wasn't really happy with what he ended up with from another place. And if he would have dealt with somebody at Upscale Audio, my non-commissioned salespeople, I think we would have advised him that, look, if you buy a $500 pair of speakers and, uh, and $50,000 in electronics, it's gonna be a $500 system, period, right? The speakers are where the rubber meets the road, period. I mean, you can get really good electronics for kind of a reasonable price if you're careful about what you're buying. And you can always upgrade them too, but the speakers are where it's at. Get something that you love. Get something that's worth owning, like these KLH Model 3s. And when you call up Scale Audio, we're gonna help you out and we have all the cool stuff. We have so many brands. And my salespeople are not on commission. They're not gonna to try to sell you a damn thing. They're gonna to listen to what you tell them about your past experiences, your room, and what you like. So I love this speaker. It's a bitchin' speaker. I love KLH. So many customers buy them and I'm telling you the response that we get from them is, uh, is, is phenomenal. Go to our website, come to our beautiful retail store. If you buy them, you don't like them, you can send them back. I mean, it's not a big deal because at Upscale Audio, I promise you this, we're gonna treat your system like, oh, the contest, Fuck. Oh well, here's the thing. I'm gonna play two notes for you. If you get the song right, we're gonna send you the shirt. Anyway, Upscale Audio, we're gonna treat your system like it's ours, thanks.